What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here today with the review for Married to Medicine Season 8 Episode 12. The episode was titled Holy Mess. Alright you guys, before we get into the review, let us... My back hurts. Sorry you guys, my back hurt. My scoliosis. Alright you guys, um, yeah. So, if you guys are watching this video and you guys are not subscribed to my channel, what are we doing, you guys? Stop taking me out on a date and not paying for it. Hit that subscribe button and hit that like button and hit that notification bell button. All right, you guys. So, without further ado, let's get into this review. Uh, you know, I got it rolled together without further ado. Let's get into this review. All right, you guys. Let's get into it. All right, you guys. So, I'm going to talk about Dr. Jackie real quick. Wasn't really much with her in this episode. I do love Dr. Jackie. Dr. Jackie for Maritime Medicine is like what Candy is on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Dr. Jackie will plug a business venture in a heartbeat. You know, last season it was the Queen V. Oh, Jesus. No, my bad, you guys. I mean, burping your face. I do that. I've been doing that a lot lately. So, yeah, you know, last season it was her book. Like, I love that she plugs herself. She plugs herself. Quad has plugged her book, a cookbook. Um, who else? I will say Contessa's plugging herself, but she's not doing a good job of it. Gotta be real with you. But yeah, Dr. Jackie. So Dr. Jackie is talking to her company manager, Ebony. So they are getting ready to have a meeting. And shout out to shout out to Dr. Like again, shout out to Dr. Jackie, because at the screen of the episode they had one of those qr codes for the company that she's working with and you could scan it and get some of the products so she, now i know she was talking about s you know spf you know sunblock but she was talking about you know when you go into the women black women going to the cosmetic store and you know the, the you know there's not very many products there that work on the african-american skin unless you're gonna buy fenty beauty I think that's like one of the main ones that you can buy like right now it's Fenty Beauty. <laughs> I mean Giselle had her every Hue Beauty but we know that that went belly under thanks to Karen Huger for that one. But yeah Dr. Jackie is you know working on a new line. Again shout out to Dr. Jackie. Make your coins. As long as you're on this show make your money make your create your businesses put your shit out there. They are gonna use you you use them. But um yeah, yeah. So that's really it for Doctor Jackie. I had to stretch that out. But let's right, guys. Let's talk about Toya real quick. So Toya. So we see Toya. She's having lunch with Contessa and with Simone. It is really interesting. I feel like we missed something between some episodes. When the hell did Toya and Contessa become cool with each other? Because I mean, when they were in D.C. Contessa was calling Toya a dumb bitch and a bitch, but now they good. I mean, I know last week's episode, you know, when Toya was getting ready to leave um, Quad's place, Contessa went out and I was confused then. And especially when when Toya got to the party and she bypassed Anila and went and hugged Contessa, I was like, huh? Did I miss something? So confusing. So, like I said, they're talking. So they're talking about the party, and Toya feels some type of way about Anila. She feels that Anila is not loyal. I don't understand. I mean, I don't get how she doesn't how she feels Anila is not loyal, and especially with the party. Like, if you're gonna say Anila is not loyal, wouldn't you say the same thing for Lisa Nicole because Lisa Nicole was there as well? And Lisa Nicole said that you should have apologized. It's just easier just to apologize to Quad. Anila didn't say anything. So wouldn't Lisa Nicole then be not loyal as well? Just I'm just trying to understand Toya's logic. And then if we talk about loyalty, didn't Carrie come to the party with you, but you ended up jetting out on her and leaving her at the party? Yeah. But she's saying that, you know, she's not loyal. I, I mean, again, I, 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 whatever. So Simone asked, you know, Toya, has she said anything about Anila? 
and Toya says no. Okay, I guess. If Toya believes she said nothing, then hey, I'm going to let Toya believe that. But I don't, you know, not knowing much about Anila, I don't, you know, I can't see the woman just, you know, automatically just wanting to have an issue with you just to have an issue with you. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. So Simone suggests that Toya talks to Anila and she was like, nope, she doesn't want to do it. See, that's Toya's problem. But see, here's the thing with Toya. Anila and Toya made up at Dr. Jackie's last party. And then this goes back to Quad's party. Like, I just, I'm confused. If Anila's not loyal, like I said, would Lisa Nicole in the same realm and breath not be loyal as well? Like, please make that shit make sense. I don't get it. Ooh, that felt good to pop my bones in my back. Um, yeah, I'm confused. So Simone tells um, Toya that, you know, she's going to have a couple's party at her house. Now, it's only going to be a select couple, so it's going to just be, it's going to consist of Simone and Cecil and Toya and Eugene, as well as Contessa and Scott. So the other couples are not coming. And they're just going to have an open dialogue. They could have kept it open dialogue. But let's talk about it. Let's move on. All right, you guys, let's talk about Simone. So Simone's house party that she's having with Simone, with herself and Cecil are hosting, you know, Contessa and Scott and um, Toya and Eugene. So Toya and Eugene show up first and they have a conversation. I wasn't following along to the conversation, so I can't really regurgitate it to you because I wasn't really following along. I know that, you know, um, Cecil and Toya ganged up on Eugene and um, you know, Simone, because they feel that they're, you know, with them being doctors, they feel that, you know, doctors are, like people say, they're the worst patients because they feel that they know everything, but whatever. So then um, Contessa and Scott show up. Why did Scott say, he? why did he say, because he, he was talking about the boom boom room down there where Cecil's, you know, stuff is. He like, could this be one of them freaky parties? Simone and Cecil having a freaky party? Simone and Cecil. Now, I can probably see Cecil, but Simone, Simone doesn't give me anything freaky. Maybe in the, in, in the wardrobe department, freaky how she dresses like Freaky Friday. But as far as her just being freaky, absolutely not. Simone does not give me anything freaky. Just being honest with you. So when they contestants got going and she tells them, you know, Scott thought this might be a swingers party. Um, No. So the producers did ask, can, you know, um, Simone and Cecil if they were if they were to swing with a couple, who would they swing with? And immediately Simone says, Contessa. Honestly, I ain't even gonna lie to you. If I was in a, if I was swinging, I would swing with them as well. I would swing with them as well. Not even gonna lie, I would swing with Contessa and Scott. Out of all the couples on this show. Out of all the couples on this show, yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a swing with them. Just gonna keep it real, but I'm a swing with contestants, guy. Cause I, Toya would get on my. I'm sorry, I think Toya would get on my nerves. Yeah, Toya would get on my. It, it, Toya would just get on my nerves, but yeah, whatever. So Contessa asked them, so where do we talk? So what's the what is the premise of this dinner? So they're talking about communication, problem solving, problem solving, and basically conflict resolution as well as listening. So then Toya is talking about the fact that, you know, COVID happened. Now they had some issues before COVID, but she says that, you know, um, it's a bigger challenge now. And she's talking about the fact that, you know, she and, and, and um, Eugene bicker and argue in front of the kids. Toya, uh, why? See, Toya is a conundrum. To, with me, Toya is a complete conundrum. I just don't understand Toya whatsoever. This man goes out and works in the ER, works long ass hours, and then he come, has to come home and bicker and argue with you? Toya, 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 make it make sense to me because it does not make sense to me. What are you, like, it's just easier to call Toya selfish. I really feel that way. It's just easier to call Toya a selfish ass person because what the fuck are you arguing with him about? Make that shit make sense to me. 
you go to the tennis court all day. Then you deal with the kids. What are you arguing about? Because, you know, she was talking about they Rome, you know, Rome Toya, this man is trying to save lives. What the fuck are you arguing with him about? So Contessa and Scott. I'm going to give Contessa this one. Scott does belittle her. Because especially when she was over there talking about how she felt and he told her to calm down. I'm like, yeah. He, he, he told her to calm down. Now, see, when they sat down at the couches and they were talking and Contessa was like, you know, because they were telling, you know, Simone and Cecil were telling them, you know, what, what, what didn't, the things that worked in each of their respective households, I guess, as kids, it might not work in the house with them together. So they may have to, they may have to you know, stop the way that they're trained or function to think a marriage or a relationship should work. It might not work in your household. And then Contessa was like, we'll stop going to counseling. Uh, no. Y'all need counseling, girl. Stay in it. But it's Scott. Scott is pig-headed. Um, oh, I mean, the next couple that's going to go down Divorce Avenue is going to be Scott and Contessa. Mark my words on that one. Let's move on and wrap the episode up. All right, you guys, let's wrap this episode up with Anila. Anila, I got a little bit of an issue with you, and I'm going to tell you why I have an issue with you. Now, I get it. You may have watched the past seasons of Marriage and Medicine, but in the realm of reality TV, you can't really say that, hey, I know what's going on between so-and-so because I've watched past seasons. Because it's kind of like breaking the fourth wall. So I get it. But we'll talk about it deeper in, when I get to Anila. So we see Anila and Quad. So it looks like Anila and Quad have hit it off with each other and they become, you know, good friends with each other. So they're out to lunch with each other much so... At this same time that they were out to eat, that's when we saw Simone, Toya, and Contessa out with each other. So they're talking about Quad's party. Um, and, and then also Neil says that she could hook um, Quad up with some of her friends, a friend of hers that she knows, and he's well endowed like black. That's a myth. That is a stereotype. That is a myth that all black men have big penises. I really wish that stereotype would go somewhere. Mm. So Quad asked Anila, does she believe if Toy that she does she believe Toy is jealous of her because of the relationships that she is forming with the women? Hmm. Anila says yes, that that could be it. Do I believe that Toya could be jealous of her because of the relationship she's building? Toya is a lot of things, but I don't believe that Toya is jealous of that. I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't get the vibe that Toya is jealous. 